Alicia and welcome back to my channel and somebody give me a prize because not only not only did I film a December TBR but Alicia is filming a December wrap-up not long after said books have been read and <laughs> Alicia got a lot of books on her DBR finished. So, I will accept all rewards. All awards, all rewards, all pats on the back, all congratulations. I don't discriminate. I will be accepting them all. Please do not hold back your applause. Thank you. So, today we will be discussing the books that I read in the month of December. And there were some good ones! Okay. I will say I had a, <laughs> a very ambitious TBR. I think we said I, 25 at last count, right? Is that where we were? Um, so I read, I didn't even count. Let's see, how many books did I read in the month of December? There were seven that I didn't finish. I think that's what I counted. Um, but I read some that were not on my TBR. I read them on my Kindle. Also, applause get so excited. I use my Kindle, guys. I read on ebook. That's kind of crazy for me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 books in the month of December. Who is she? <laughs> no one knows. Can she keep it up? Probably not. <sighs> so yeah, uh, this is going to be a crazy long video because we have 19 books to get through and I talk a lot so I'm going to try to keep it brief baby but considering this intro is probably already four minutes long sorry guys it's going to be a bear of a video um so let's just get right into it the first book that I that's popping up on here I don't think that this is right um but I was reading them back to back so I probably just forgot to say that I finished a book so anyhow We'll go off Goodreads. Some days they know what they're talking about. Other days, no. First, we're going to take a minute to talk about the bookmark that was used the entire month of December. She did good. She did good. I was very proud of her. Um, that is my major scene bookmark. A friend of mine does bookmarks and um, a bunch of other awesome stuff with, like, leathery type material and she had this one and I think I got it last year after Christmas and I was like that's it that's what I'm using for Christmas next year and here we are it was used the whole entire month I didn't use a single other bookmark so yes I love it so much it's so cute the first book that I read is Kiss Me on Christmas by Sarah Monson and I rated this a four out of five stars. And y'all, y'all, Sarah is the queen of representation. She just, she writes real people with real issues and problems and real life and does it beautifully. And this one has autism, ADHD, um, what else? There was like the... A bunch of different things like alphabet soup of uh, diagnosis for her son and she was a single mother and just their relationship was so sweet but y'all Beckett first of all he was a youtuber and that was a lot of fun um, he was giving me like mr. beast mark rober mix vibes um and i was here for it it was a lot of fun uh and her son absolutely loved him watched him on youtube and their little meet cute was so cute and the, uh it was just great it really was it was so cute forced proximity 
<sighs> Adorable, really. And oh, it was so good. Oh, but then hold on. I think it was in the dedication. Let me read it to you because it was super sweet. Um, so Sarah's son is a sweetheart. Um, poor guy deals with a lot of different things. Um, so our son has a lot of the similarity, a lot of the disorders that were represented in the book and in the author's note, she, um, says, if you haven't guessed, the character of Liam Stadford was inspired by my son, Elijah. The two are not identical. I gave Liam some of Elijah's quirks, but I also made him his own unique person. Not literally because he's a fictional character, but you know what I mean. Elijah gave me permission to use him as inspiration for a character. He wants people to know that neurodiversity isn't something to be afraid of, but the world sometimes is a little more overwhelming for people whose brains function like his. So it's always to, it's always important to be kind to everyone. It's just really sweet, and I love I'm I see her and I follow her on social media, and I just I love uh, seeing her relationship with her kids and just how she handles it, and she's just. A wonderful woman, wonderful author, wonderful mother, beautiful. Next. <laughs> Next I read A Holly Jilly Christmas by Emma St. Clair. This was a surprise to uh, Emma's readers. She said she was not going to write another Christmas novella. Wasn't going to do it. She didn't want to. But then she got so sucked into it because everybody and their sister was writing a Christmas novel this year and honestly made my little heart happy. I mean, I'm very glad she got sucked into it because A Holly Jolly Christmas was a five star read for me. It was adorable. It's set kind of in Sheet Cake, which is where her new series takes place. And the characters and then she wrote a bonus scene because the story is told from Jilly's perspective but then she wrote a bonus scene told from Ch from Case's perspective and mm, it was so good uh, age gap workplace forced proximity a little grumpy sunshine action I cannot wait to get a physical copy and have it on my shelf because I love. So cute. Um, they were adorable. Some laugh out loud moments. Emma is just stupid talented. Like crazy. Amazing. I love her. So, yeah. The next one I read is... Christmas Like This by Karina Taylor. This is book two in her A Love Like This series. Uh, but it wasn't something that you had to read in order, so I don't feel like I missed anything. But I will say I'm very excited to read the series because I think a couple of the characters who popped up um, are characters in the series and they get their own love stories. And I'm always down for somebody else's love story. <laughs> love a good rom-com. Um, I rated this a 4 out of 5 star. It's super, super tiny. Um, it was a workplace, forced proximity, proximity, hate to love kind of thing. And while I, I love those tropes, it was cute. Christmas book, I try to be really lenient with them, <laughs> especially when it's so small. Hate felt a little weird. Um, and it wasn't really hate, it was more... miscommunication and assumptions which is why I hate to love while a fun trope to read can sometimes not be my favorite only because that's what it tends to lean towards like just assumptions because they didn't talk to each other but then they find out that like they really like each other I don't know I'm weird about it but it was super super cute I did really enjoy it Maria um was dealing with some heavy grief in this book and I just loved his name is Trey I loved that Trey like stood by her side understood and just like refused to let her stop living um he didn't 
he validated her feelings because the grief she was going through made sense. What she was feeling was a th like, yes, we, yes. Um, but it stopped her from enjoying life and living. Um, and he reminded her how to do that and just kept her grounded in a way like to refocus her back to reality that she was alive um, and she could live and she deserved those things. So beautifully done for such a short story. There was a lot of things happening. It was very, very cute. I'm excited to read the Love Like This series. Holly Jilly Christmas and a Love Like This are not Christian fiction, uh, but they are clean. Uh, next. Guys. Guys. <laughs> this series was my priority in the month of December. And let me tell you, I flew through it. I think at one point I was reading two books a day. Like, just, I was staying up way too late. Any free time I had, I was reading. Like, I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, but the Christmas Escape series? Obsessed. Obsessed. I understand why Instagram hyped them. <laughs> it's so good. But Christmas Baggage? Alright, okay, this is Christmas Baggage by Deborah M. Hathaway. It was the first book in the series, and y'all, I gave it a five star. It was so stinking cute. It is, this girl goes to England um, for the holiday with her friend, and they stay with her aunt, and she meets this super grumpy man in the airport. <laughs> and they have this, like, this whole interaction. Um, and then, come a to find out, of course, as rom-coms go, he is cousins with her friend so now he's involved and then stuff happens they get close it's great uh celestria there is mandalorian star wars representation in this book uh adorable i don't even follow it i don't even watch it but i was here for it because the banter the love the nerdiness this book so good Loved it so much. I will be uh, looking for Deborah's other books because her writing style was so cute. I loved it so much. So, yeah, I love. I loved this book. <laughs> it was great. Um, yeah, just started off the Christmas Escape series with a bang. I loved it. Five stars. Again, this series is not Christian fiction. Um, this one was clean. I don't believe there was any language in it. Let me double check because I did put that in my review. Yeah, completely clean. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Beautiful. The next one was Host for the Holidays by Martha Keys. And I rated this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Um, okay. It was cute. I really liked it. I loved the premise. So, homegirl over here goes to Paris. Um, gets an Airbnb and ends up falling in love with the, he's not the Airbnb host technically, um, but he kind of is. It was cute. However, um, it had a theme running through it that I personally don't enjoy. She was in a serious relationship for probably like half if not like three quarters of the book it felt like it might have been less than that no no it was it was most of it um and I don't like that not that there was anything necessary they did anything wrong like they didn't cheat there was no kissing there was no like feelings talked about before they broke up um but feelings were felt on both sides and they hung out a lot together oddly enough at the assist like the insistence of her boyfriend who was a total sleaze ball i'm not saying he wasn't he was a toad and great awesome glad they broke up truly <laughs> 
However, I don't think they should have stayed in the relationship for so long while the two main characters were falling in love. So that personally is a bother for me. Um, but yeah, other than that, like it, it really was super cute. I loved the writing style. The characters were a lot of fun. There were nicknames. And y'all, I'm a sucker for a good nickname. Um, he called her Stars and Stripes. And, you know, my American blood just loved, loved it. Um, but it, it really was sweet, adorable. It was a true love story. I just wish that she hadn't been with gross, disgusting, toad boyfriend man. Who she... I don't think it's a spoiler. Is it a spoiler? No, it's not. It's on the back. She thought she was going to Paris to get engaged. And through this whole time, and I say serious relationship, because the entire time that character A and B are falling in love, character A and C are planning to get engaged. Weird to anyone else? Just me? Okay. Other, I mean, they seem, it seems like a big issue for me. And it, like, it bothered me, but... Setting that aside, it was a very cute story, um, but that's why I rated it on the lower side. The next one I read was A Faking Christmas by Cindy Steele, and <laughs> I understand. I get it. I get the hype. I get the love. I understand the Cindy Steele hype. I, this book blew up. Blew up on Instagram. Out of the whole series, I think this was like the most talked about. And it was so well done. It really was. I really enjoyed it. It was a hate to love workplace fake dating trope. Need I say more? Miles. Miles. Oh, Miles. How I love you. There were nicknames. Now, these were on the more teasing side, but I don't mind those either. Um, there was frustration. While the, again, we're back to a love like this situation. Olive had a, felt like she had a chip on her shoulder the whole book. She finally started to thaw, um, but she just felt unnecessarily snippy. And I could understand some of it. I, I get it. I do. Um, but not all of it. <laughs> and it just got a little old. She, she, like, she held on to this snippy attitude for a while. Um, but Miles was great. And he finally helped her soar and get over it. And they both dealt with some serious grief and some serious trauma and pent up frustrations and feelings. And that was beautiful. That was beautifully done. Loved it. That's one thing about this whole series that they were much deeper than you expect from a Christmas romance. Um, but all the characters had depth and like they all dealt with something and truly grew which is the test of a great author so props to all of them they did amazing um but yeah this was stinking adorable it really was I get it I rated it a four out of five it's again none of the books are Christian um and this one did have one one mild cuss word but that's it I get it. I will be on the Cindy Steele train. The next one was A Newport Christmas by Jess Heilman. Heilman. And this is another fake dating trope. Here for it. And it wasn't even like fake dating. It was more like fake attraction to get out of something. And it was just it was good. I love it. Enforced proximity and it was Christmas and there was chemistry and both characters um, were divorced and that was a very interesting um, mental place to be just because I personally have not even been married so I'm 
not divorced and I don't know anybody in my immediate family or even extended family who's divorced clo like close enough where I know what that feels like um, or the the trauma that it puts you through um, especially when they weren't the one who initiated the divorce or there wasn't like you know it wasn't their actions that caused it um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure how accurate but at the same time, I feel like she did a very good job writing them. Like, I could see that being feelings, and all the feelings were valid, and they made sense. And so I think she did a wonderful job. Landon was delicious. I loved him. <laughs> um, he was a little brooding, and a little snarky, and a little grumpy at first. Um, but underneath, he was such a sweetheart such a cinnamon roll we love a good cinnamon roll character um but he was just great and quinn was a hot mess <laughs> like literally it's in the title but she was a stinking disaster and while it, like i loved the contrast of that of of quinn to landon and how they work together i really did love that i found her to be a little immature sometimes um and it got a little tedious being in her perspective um but it was endearing to Landon and they are fake characters so it is not that big of a deal <laughs> but she did get a little much for me sometimes uh, she was quirky she was fun she was just excessive from time to time while I, I loved the story I really did it was great the epilogue was adorable um and I don't mind a fast pace quick romance really don't they don't bother me this one Quinn really didn't feel ready to me like something about it felt rushed in a way that felt weird like I don't know just be, maybe because she was a little more on the uh, self-conscious like didn't really know who she was on her own as a person and she even said a few times that she wasn't ready. Like, that felt authentic. And then all of a sudden they were in a relationship. And I mean, it worked. It was fine. But she really, really didn't feel ready to me. Um, but that might have just been a me thing. So I rated it a three and a half star. But it was really cute. And I loved the fact that, like, there was a Christmas wedding. Want one of those now. Um, and the center, like, she was brought in to bake and make these gorgeous gingerbread houses as centerpieces. And I just, I loved that aspect. And really, it was super cute. And, yeah. Again, not uh, Christian fiction, but it was clean. The next one was A Not-So-Holiday Paradise by Gracie Ruth Mitchell. And this one I rated a 4 out of 5 star. It is by far the smallest book out of the series. But it was super cute. This was fun because... It wasn't set in like the typical place where you would spend Christmas. It was set on an island. And there was forced proximity and being stranded. And it was brother's best friend. And Christmas on a, it, like, on a cruise ship, but then on an island. But it really wasn't a paradise island. There were some issues. And I also really enjoyed, um, so this book has epilepsy uh representation and there is an on-page seizure that happens a uh, an episode uh and gracie ruth mitchell does in fact the author has epilepsy um so she did write from personal experiences and stuff like that uh she wrote a beautiful like note to the readers in the front expressing her heart and giving that trigger warning if that is something that um affects people but I think she did a wonderful job I love the fact that there is uh, an epileptic character an epileptic main character and you kind of go through what's going through her mind through this whole process um so yeah overall beautifully done uh the there was grumpy sunshine obviously the brother's best friend thing is always fun because the brothers have always they always make these stupid little comments about how sisters are off limits and all the things. When Beckett stood up for Molly um, towards the end, it was just beautifully done. And the compromise, and Molly was just so fun and bubbly and just 
great and she was in marine biology for fish and it was just it was cute it really was adorable adorable then I took a small break from the Christmas escape series to buddy read you and me by Becky Wade and I loved the idea for this story uh, the dating consultant type trope thing was fun. There's a movie, and Celestri and I talked about this when we buddy read it, um, and I think we were talking about the same movie, where it's like a dating coach, and they end up falling in love. So, a lot of fun. Uh, however, something about this fell short for me. I rated it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, so the characters were friends, had been for a long time. I used friends loosely. They'd known each other, but then they got closer after college and whatnot. But in the story, they're friends. And the guy, what is his name? Shay. No, that's the girl. Mm, Connor. Connor is in love with Shay. Has been for years. She did not know he existed. Um, and it really... There was a point in the book that kind of irritated me a little bit and I think I read too much into it um because when I told Celestia she was like I didn't see that and I think this is just person to person for me personally <laughs> I read into this and I didn't like it um but it felt like Shay didn't notice him until he was off the market so his ploy to spend more time with Shay and to become the man that she would date was to make up this girl. And he, honestly, Shay's the one who made her up. He just gave a hypothetical and he was talking about her, but she didn't know this and blah, blah, blah. She created this girl. She gave her a name. She gave her an identity. But it was like the minute that there was another girl in the picture, she was like, Oh wait, but he's cool and he's fun and he's sweet and he's good looking and all these things. And I was just like, okay, but you didn't notice him until he like asked you for help and he became off the market hypothetically but she didn't know it was hypothetical and I don't know. It felt a little off. There also something about, I, I don't know. It was cute, it was fast, it was fine. It was just middle of the road for me, but that is something that I read into and and it did kind of bother me. Again, probably just a personal thing of me reading into stuff that wasn't really there, but whatever. Then I jumped from all of the contemporary books that I had been reading into the world of historic hell. And I read A Holiday by Gaslight. I also buddy read this with a bunch of ladies. And I rated this a three and a half star. Yes. Um, I rated this a three and a half star. It was super quick. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed them getting to know each other. It was like a slow burn type thing. He fell first. But he's a little bit of a grump. And it was like the brooding type. And But he's trying to be a gentleman because he comes from humble beginnings and trying to be this person that he thinks she wants and it was it really was cute this was my first book by Mimi um, and I do plan to read some more the reason that I rated it um, on the lower side is there was quite a bit of language in here uh, but there was way more language in here than I thought was gonna be in a historical Christmas novella uh, and nothing crazy like there weren't words that made me want to like, like, ow, I can't finish, how dare she kind of thing. It was just repetitive and felt a little unnecessary, honestly. Could have made the same point without it. Um, and it, for me personally, it took me out of the story and it did affect my enjoyment of reading it and like my reading experience. I know that we, that was one thing that we all were talking about in the group chat when we were discussing the book is the language took us all by surprise but it didn't bother um some of the other girls it didn't bother their reading experience and that's totally fine but for me personally it did upset my reading experience 
to where it would like pull me out of the book and I would have to stare at it going what did I just read <laughs> what um so yeah it was a little a little frustrating then because I am obsessed and sucked in and I have drank the Kool-Aid of which is the Christmas Escape series I had to jump back into it um and I read later on what conspired by Courtney Kiesel and y'all top tier okay Ooh, five out of five stars if I could give it 10 I would give it 10 and you know what it is my channel I can do what I want 10 out of 10 it is great it is CIA meets Christmas meets intrigue and spy and fake Christmas fling and surprises and spies and the CIA and intrigue and all the things and kissing and raiding kissing stop stop I'm obsessed okay uh it was great the characters are so much fun and I loved them and their little inside jokes and she literally grabbed him on an escalator and just started kissing him because she ran into an ex and it, it was just a whole moment it was a whole moment changing scene the changing room scene it listen if you know you know and I'm gonna need you all to get on this jam because whew, it was so good there was so much action for a Christmas book but I was here for it I wasn't expecting it Someone had said something how there was like suspense and it didn't really necessarily feel suspenseful to me personally. Um, it was very action packed, like super action packed and I loved it and ooh, yeah, obsessed. Okay, it was a whole moment. It was a whole moment and I cannot wait to read Courtney's other books. Okay, next. I went from the highs to the lows. I read I read Not So Alone for Christmas by Jenny Proctor. Um, and I'm giving this a two out of five star. Trying to give the story the benefit of the doubt. It was super, super short. Um, but I have an issue with the holding on to old hurts and old grudges and stuff from high school when they are much older than high school age. And it's let them affect their relationships with people um, and how they view people and they like hold grudges and I, especially if it's not something that the other character even knew about. <laughs> um, yeah, so the main girl character had a crush on the main guy character who was a couple years older than her. I think they were next door neighbors or something like that. Um, had a crush on him in high school longer than that actually like for years he didn't see her at all because he was older and she was just a his kid neighbor and like she got hurt somehow and like I get it her pride was hurt when it was finally explained like I get it I would have been upset too but she literally held on to it and she was a little like all over the place and I don't know I just really She's a little rude to him and didn't really take time to get to know him and just was willing to throw everything away and I don't know. Bo was great. It's Bo and Maddie. I don't know why he kept trying. It was it was just it was a little weird. Um strange. The parents picked up, took the siblings and they all went to Hawaii for Christmas. And they left her in Chicago and and she like I don't know I understand no no I don't know I don't know it just uh, try to give it the benefit of the doubt truly but I just I don't think that I I can I really didn't enjoy that so then I decided 
to do the thing that I was dreading most the whole season. And that was finish off the Christmas Escape series. So I finished it with Cotswold's Holiday by Casey Stockton. And guys, it was so cute. It was cool because, okay, so we started off the series with an American going to England for the holiday. And we end the series with an American going to England for the holiday. And it was great. And it was a lot of fun. He's a yoga instructor. And this character, the main character, was divorced. Um, so again, interesting. Uh, the dynamic between the two and like his feelings. And he was very open. And the characters were great. And he talked about like the therapy that he went through. And his cousin, they ran a pub together. And it was just... It was great. Their relationships. Also another like Airbnb fall in love with the host kind of thing. Um, so yeah. And there was a lot of tra like, trauma that totally made sense that the main girl character had to get through. Um, yeah, it was a, a little crazy. Um, but it was done really well. Super, super cute. I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, oh I really enjoyed the whole experience. It was great. One thing I would have loved to have a dual point of view. Um, I think there were only a couple of the stories that had dual POVs. Because, so one thing that was fun. Everybody wrote, like, it really felt like I was just reading seven different books. The only thing that ties them in is the fact that they are traveling for Christmas. Over the holiday, they're escaping something or whatnot. Um, Christmas escape. So that was the only thing that really tied these books into each other. But every book is written from a very different writing style, which I loved because obviously every book is written by a different author. And you really get to feel the feel for their writing style and if you'll enjoy their other books. Um, so because of that, I'm saying I'm a lot, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my thoughts together. Because of that, there was a lot of like single point of view, a lot of first person. Um, I am a big lover of third person dual point of view uh, but from time to time I will dabble in dual person first point of view um just kind of depends but there were quite a few from the girl side only first person and that just takes me longer to read for some reason I don't really understand why um but yeah I mean they were all great they really were I loved the loved them I loved 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 them and whoever came up with the idea thank you thank you to the ladies who were involved <sighs> made my Christmas made my season I will 100% be reading rereading re re a few of them because they were so good loved them greatest experience if you haven't experienced them you should they were fabulous the next book that I read was Cabin Mate by Leah Bruner, and I rated this a four out of five star. Um, y'all, Brooks and Molly, Brooks and Molly. Mm. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This picks up not long after Checkmate, which in Checkmate a bet was made, and in said bet, Brooks, our resident playboy who's not really a playboy but everybody just assumes that he's a playboy because he's good looking and he likes to flirt um he doesn't like bounce around like he's in love with molly head over heels in love with molly and has been since college um and no other girl will be as good as molly but but i mean he's a millionaire a wicked smart millionaire who comes from a very good family and he is good looking um, and at no point were they in an active relationship and he was still flirting with people. Let's make that clear. He was just in love with Molly and they were best friends. And um, I love Brooks. I love Molly. It was great. There was some fake trading, fake dating. Um, but said bet was that he couldn't date because it, it was a whole thing. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I... Love that they were super real with each other. Oh, it was a one bed trope. That's always a lot of fun. There was just humor. Leah is great at just creating lovable, real life feeling, because they're really not real, unfortunately. I wish they were. Um, 
but also on the cusps of being totally not possible. Um, just great characters who are real and just, they're, they're great. And I really did enjoy the book and I love the windows and I love best friends and they are in a business together and then when they finally fall in love and it's just so great and watching it, <sighs> I loved it. There were some flashback scenes, um, to like when they met in college and their friendship and stuff and I really enjoyed that. Because while you got a good foundation of their friendship, it didn't take away from the current timeline that was going on um, that made you feel like you couldn't like keep track. Like it all flowed very well together. Um, the series was great. I still have to read Housemate. I've read Running Mate, Checkmate, Cabin Mate. I need to read Housemate. Um, but I just, I've loved the series I loved the characters I love a good close-knit family so much and siblings <laughs> here for it um so yeah it was not Christian fiction it's clean it's closed door but there is some um mild language throughout the book and uh, a lot of chemistry I read Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. This was our December pick for our book club and I rated this a three and a half star um, I get why people love it. I do. Um, but I personally didn't. <laughs> like, it was wholesome. It was sweet. I would have loved, I would love to see it in a movie. I think that this would be great in movie format. And I would probably love it that way. In book format, though, I know the main concept was that Callie had touched so many, like, so many people's lives. Um, and I get that was, like, supposed to be the main thing in, like, the, the lives she touched and, and whatnot. Um, but Sydney, her granddaughter was, um, really on the selfish and, like, defensive side constantly. And it made it really hard for me to root for her. Um, I felt like there was just a lot of, like, paper time given to a court case that had no standing on the story, really. Um, and she was so connected to a job, and I didn't really understand her motivation to, like, stay there and act like she couldn't get another job job and like she couldn't be a lawyer somewhere else um like her her grandmother was couldn't take care of herself she knew she was sick but she refused to take time off like she was upset when she had to take time off work to take care of, like I, I don't know there was just some weird like the motivation behind it felt off um Finn was really crabby and kind of rude, and I don't feel like he really had a reason for it. Um, there was, again, no motivation behind his reactions to stuff. Like, I... I... No. I can't even say that I get it. Because he lost his restaurant during the economic crash. But also told Sydney in the next breath that he was burnt out and he didn't mind and he was kind of glad he lost it. So like his motivation to be crabby towards stuff just didn't really make sense. And there was no other like life issues that I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not like I get why people love it. I do. I can see it. For me maybe because I just haven't had those life experiences. I don't get it. Um, I felt that, like, Callie loved the Lord. Like, that was great. Finn and Sydney were really cynical. Um, and that's fine. Like, I, they changed towards the end. But at the same, same time, it felt a little false. Um, and I wish there had been more on-screen time for that. And that that had been a larger focus than it was. Um, and then there had been a little bit more time to actually see the shift in their lives. And then I think I would have enjoyed their characters before. Um, 
to like actually see the difference that the Lord makes in what salvation does to someone's life and turns a cynical, crabby person into someone who has a little bit more joy because they have hope for eternity. So yeah, I like I'm glad I read it. I I do I I I understand why. I can see parts of it. Like I I get why it touches people's lives and I get why it's emotional for some people. It just personally wasn't for me, but that could be the fact that I just don't have those life experiences. Um and reading is subjective. So Next, I read Christmas at White Frares by Elizabeth Camden and this I found out, look at me go, is a part of her Empire Building or Empire State Building series that she wrote. This is about the sister of the hero in the first book and y'all couldn't stand her. Um, I rated it a 3 out of 5 star. Again, another one that was just fine. It was a cute story overall. Like it's a historical Christmas book. Elizabeth Camden is fantastic at historical things and historical times and giving you bits and pieces of real history. She does an amazing job with research. She really does. Um, there was great character development, but man, this girl character, Mary, she was a pill. Um, she carried this resentment towards her brother for leaving white frares. She has this resentment towards him that he went to America, fell in love, and she only gets to see him once a year. And she was so nasty about it! Like, she just kept bringing it up in like these snide little comments and it just, to me it didn't add anything to the story and they didn't actually ever talk about it and like figure out their feelings. They just did the typical sibling thing. You get mad at each other, you spew words that are kind of mean, um, and then you don't ever discuss it again. <laughs> you just kind of live life um, and she just she didn't like change and like she just got really defensive and there were a lot of unhealthy habits that she had in life and people were just trying to help her they really were and I just I don't know she just felt like a little babyish and I she finally did grow I get it and I think I will say this I think one of the things was that she was supposed to have anxiety um, which I'm not saying is babyish please don't take my words out of context um i think she like she had a panic attack on page so um when she had to leave the castle and i think that's kind of a, a that she's supposed to have it just felt written funky but again this could be me i don't personally deal with those things um but just like the mental it, I don't know, something about it just felt weird to me and I really personally didn't care for it. The next book I read was Lord Farley and Miss Frost by Sally Britton. This is book four in the Calv Calvor Castle romances and I really enjoyed this story. Um, I really love this series. I've really <laughs> the two books that I read out of the four um, but I really enjoyed the cast of characters. Um, and Lord Farley was great. I loved him. He was fun. He was fun. Uh, Simon. And he was just a good time. Uh, I loved that there was communication and there was like this barter that was done between friends. And it was just good natured fun and it was just sweet. There was great communication throughout the book. Um, there was a great foundation of friendship and just like, thoughts and he really thought what she said was important. and. It was great. There were some miscommunications in the beginning and like assumptions made, but they literally talked through it. There was like a suspense plot that kind of ran through the book and because it wasn't the main plot line at all, it felt a little weird um, and a little out of the blue. Like they kind of set it up and I saw it coming, like I saw who the bad guy was coming from a mile away. Um, but then like it was literally just a scene. And so it felt a little weird since it hadn't really been talked about through the story. But we love a good girl, like, kind of sort of, kind of sort of coming to the rescue moment. But, like, not really. It was just for a hot second. And then he took over and it was great. Um, 
but yeah i love the blending of like the irish and the english especially like during this time period um and the christmas traditions and all the things and it really was so cute and i rated it four out of five stars not christian um uh, but clean the next book i read was holiday hang-ups by Ann brown and it was cute um it was super short i rated it three out of five stars um the main characters had like this little like small town high school rivalry type thing but not really like they didn't know each other in high school it's just like they were proud of their high school and they were rival high schools and that was just like a fun little tidbit that kept popping up um the story was super fast um that wasn't long the romance felt a little one-sided at times and i think some of that had to do from the fact that we only got her pov like the girl's pov and it was um like first person and she even talks about that but it just felt kind of awkward because it felt one-sided like most of the time do like a, a single point of view you can feel the chemistry but it literally just felt like a man was being nice and she just took it to the extreme i feel like if it had been longer and we had gotten his point of view it would have felt better um than what was going down because it felt a little awkward but it was cute there were some good moments there were some cute moments it was enjoyable um yeah it was just it was just middle of the road it's cute three stars um i'm glad i read it if she was a new to me author um i'm interested to see some of her other books she seems like such a sweetie and then the last book that i read in the month of december that was the joy to the world novella collection this has stories by carolyn miller amanda barrett and erica vetch and Heaven and Nature Sing by Carolyn Miller, I gave three out of five stars. Um, it was a second chance romance. It was fine. It felt really long for only being 106 pages or something like that. There was a lot of assumptions and miscommunications that had the characters just spoken to each other, the story literally would have been like five pages long. Um, like their reasonings for said breakup kind of made sense like the second chance was great the lead up was fine the matchmaking godmother was a lot of fun she was a fun touch but it just felt a little long for only being 100 pages um but again this communication is not it for me so i think that's kind of threw me far as the curse is found by amanda barrett five out of five stars five out of five stars it was perfect um it was really heartwarming and just sweet. It had a wonderful message. Um, we're more than our scars, visible and not. God sees us. God loves us. Um, and it, it was just beautifully done. Grumpy sunshine. Sign me up. Um, the characters were super honest with each other. They had great communication. They talked to each other. It was sweet. It was great. On board. My first story by Amanda. She has a beautiful writing style absolutely gorgeous i'm excited to read other books by her and then wonders of his love by erica vetch is actually a part of her sense and serendipity series i think that's what it's called um i read one of the books earlier this year and enjoyed it um and it was Scylla's story which i was kind of hoping that we'd see when i read that book i was like oh it'd be interesting to see a book from her perspective um it was fine <laughs> i read it at a three star she was a pushover and she had zero backbone but when she finally did start standing up for herself it was great it was just like in really small spurts or like spurts or like she would think it and like it was fine it was i'm glad it it, it ended really beautifully i love how it ended overall i think i gave i gave the collection a three and a half star because i really didn't care for two of the stories they were fine they were okay but amanda's beautiful absolutely well done loved it so yeah those are the books that i read in the month of december i had a very busy reading month i absolutely loved pretty much every moment of it i had a couple books that were a little bit of flops but that's okay you always do reading is subjective um christmas books are great the christmas season is great i absolutely loved it um and i cannot believe that i read 19 books this month
or in the month of December. That is crazy to me. Nuts. Hopefully I can keep it up. Hopefully we'll get some good reading done in 2023. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you can check out my blog at fortheloveofchristianfiction.blogspot.com where I will talk about a few of these there. You can follow my Instagram at for the love of Christian Fiction. Stay up to date with what I'm reading and reviewing over there. I'm super active in my stories. Um, and yeah, all my other links are in the description box below. I told you this was going to be a long one. I bet it's going to be crazy long. Sorry. Here we go. Yep. It's going to be a fun one. All right. That's it, I think. I should stop talking now. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you next time.